Jared Dudley, NBA, Phoenix Suns. How you doing, sir? Doing good. How you doing? Good, good. This is Ricky Rivers on the mic, man. I got my boy E Complete, Eddie Burgos. Uh, hey, what's night. up, Jared? Everybody good? Everybody good? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I know, Matt. You, did you shoot around today, Jared? Did you go to facilities out here? No, nah, I didn't go. I didn't go. I'll be there. I'll be there on uh, on Monday, man. You know, on Tuesday I was out here in Vegas already training, and you know I got the call or the text basically saying we can go on Thursday, man. That wasn't giving me enough time notice to to pack up and move, and you know I, I let my 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 lease go in in Phoenix after the season, so. Uh, I still gotta find a place, but I'll stay in the hotel next week for a week before I do all that. What do you? What all right, you well, listen, Jared. Was that you stay in San Diego or you staying in Vegas during the off season? I stay, I stay in San Diego for basically seventy five percent, and the last twenty five percent of the summer, I usually go to Vegas, get away, you know, pick up the you know the intensity and training where you go two two times sometimes three times a day, usually August and beginning of September. I go all out there for this year since we had a long lockout. I went August and whole of September, came back to San, uh, San Diego, October and November. And then when they reinstated this last week, I thought we'd have a week and a half, so I just came out here to get some pickup in. Uh, everyone's, everyone's been shooting, working on the game, but it's different to play, you know, especially play with pros, so that's what I wanted to do. Hey, hey, Jack. While you was while you was off the line, we were kind of just talking about this Phoenix roster heading into as you get prepared for the for Black Friday, which I call it on December ninth. Now, when I look at the roster, I, the, the the three players that stick out to me are Vince Carter, Nash, Grant Hill, for obvious reasons in terms of age, in terms of Vince, Steve Nash, fifteen years in the league, Grant Hill, sixteen, Carter, thirteen years in the league. You know, my thoughts were: do, do you deal? Do you, do you feel you deal, Nash? Or, I don't know if you go on the record by saying that. Which... I mean, my, my whole thing is, for a business standpoint, uh, he's a franchise. He's the face. If he's not there, you better have someone there to sell tickets right. because he sells tickets. I don't care how bad we are, how good we are. They're going to buy his jersey. And they're going to come to watch him play. So. If you do, I would I would only personally ever trade him if he wanted to trade. Now, if he doesn't want to trade, then he probably would sign an extension. So if you sign an extension, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, even if he's not 100%, let's say Nash, he starts going downhill, let's say he's 70%. The man just plays the NBA and assists. So instead of averaging 11 assists, he averages 8 assists. Well, that, that's just like every other point guard, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he, his shooting, I mean, when you get older, your shooting doesn't go down. He's still going to shoot 40% from three and 50 from the field. So I would keep him, and and they're still playing at a high level. So until they start going down, you got to keep them. I, I agree. I know you've been the recipient of a lot of Nash assists. But if it's not Nash bringing that ball up, who would you run that lane hard with on the right side and you know that you could get that ball hit? What other point guard in the league would you run hard? Uh, definitely either, either, either Chris Paul. I mean, Chris Paul loves the pass. He scores because – because he knows he has to, but trust me, he loves to pass with Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, D. Rose and Russell Westbrook, they shoot the ball all the time, so it wouldn't be them. Uh, <laughs> I do like Darren Williams. Maybe Rondo. Rondo. Darren, you know what? I could play with Darren Williams. I could play with Darren Williams. I definitely yeah. could play with Darren. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of these young point guards that are exciting, but it's it's good to play with some veterans who made their all-stars. They don't have nothing to prove. I mean, Darren Williams – he knows who he is. He, he, he's a natural scorer too. But I mean, you get Rondo, Paul, and Nash. I mean, they're they're looking for you. I mean, they could be having a great night. Nash rather have twenty assists than thirty points. And you you love playing with those guys. No question. And Jared, I just got one question. Now you've you've kind of like since the season ended, you've kind of maybe watched ESPN, kind of watched all this lockout stuff play, these negotiations play. Not sure how close and in touch you are with it. At the end of it, when you get ready for basketball, do you feel like your guys and Billy Hunter, Derek Fisher, do you feel like they've repped you and the players the right way? You feel comfortable with this deal going in? What are your thoughts? That's a that's a great question. You know what? And I, I think throughout the league is going to be up and down. I think that they did a good job salvaging the season. I think that they could have handled it differently, but it's easy for me to say. I'm on the outside looking in. I'm not I'm not in there in the trenches every day. Um, but I mean, 
I just felt like the antitrust that we that we sued basically the NBA. I feel like we should have done that earlier. I mean, potentially we, we might we might not have missed forty games. Why why, why, why when we sued the why when we sued the NBA, one week two weeks later they call us let's let's get a deal done. So I rather have done that I rather have done that in August or September and play eighty two mm-hmm. than sixty six and miss paychecks. But at the end of the day, we have a season. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm not going to say anyone did a bad job, uh, but I w- but I will say that you know what I think there there could have been other measures of us doing it you know a different way at times. But hey, you, you tip your hat to Derek Fisher. We got a deal done, and let's go play. What, one other question. Now I'm still combing the layers of this deal, uh, and I'm sure you've been briefed by the guys. Is there something where you saying okay when this deal is done, you saying tax? I I, I I don't think we should have got. I don't think that should have. I'm glad. I'm sorry we're missing this piece. Or I'm glad we got this piece, but I'm sorry we're missing those pieces. There's a couple of things in that. Well, at, at, I mean, at the end of the day, the owners say they were losing 300 million per year. They said collectively the league is losing 300. So the BRI basically what means the basket, basketball related income. So everything when it comes from jersey sales and all that, we get 57 percent. We did. They get 53. We said, hey. We'll go to 54% and give you $300 million back. So now you break even. So if you actually manage your team good, you're going to make even. You're going to make money. Yeah. They wanted a guarantee. So basically at the 50-50, it guarantees them basically that they're going to make money no matter what. They could have a terrible GM and owner. So I think if we make 50-50 and you guarantee to make money, then the system that we just had should be exactly the same, if not better. And the system got worse. The mid level went from thirty three million to twenty million. For non tax paying teams and for tax paying teams it was four years sixteen, I believe. So that's my whole thing is we gave you guys more money than you were asking for, but the system's even worse. And that's why I don't understand. Yes, yeah, I agree I think, with that. You know, because yeah. when you when you're looking at it through television, sometimes I think there's a fan, and I sit here as a fan as well. Sometimes we get misguided about what are some of the arguing points and what are the sticking points. We look, you see two two entities arguing over big dollars, and we just want to see a game, well, and we lose the. Contract. Well, the reason why you guys are seeing that is because Stern controls everything. Stern is the best. He's like, it's like having a hype man before you come out, you know, a rapper, you know, something like that. He's, he, controls the whole, he controls the whole TV. He controls ESPN. ESPN pays him. Wow. So you don't think ESPN's going to put good stuff on for him, which he's smart. He's a smart businessman. He knows what he's doing. When we sued him, he went on the air right away. He, was on, he went on a, a, a media tour. Billy Hunter didn't do that. He knows, hey, I'm going to get the perception out there that the players are greedy. Regardless if players or owners or both of us agree, he put the perception out there, and he's smart. So at the end of the day, we were on retreat mode, like, damn, let's just try to grab some scraps. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, but the difference, I think, this time, I think fans more were on the players' side compared to, like, 1999 where the fans were all against the players. I think the play, uh, fans knew that the players were giving back a lot. And you know the, the yeah. fans. After a while, they're like, "Listen, I don't want the fans. I don't want the players to lose. Like, you know, the way you guys gave back a lot." You know what? Yeah, no, I think people thought that. I think you you have your your split down the line, and I mean, we try to put out there, you know, what they're what we're asking. Um, but there was a lot of loopholes in the deal, especially early on. It, it kind of got more cleared up towards the end, where he said it, that David Stern said it wasn't a hard cap, but basically, if you spent more money. If you spent over a certain amount of money, you had to pay $3 on the dollar, which no owner would ever do. So basically it was a hard cap. He just uses his words wisely. And at the end of the day, fans don't care who wins or who loses. They want to see the NBA. We all want to see the NBA. Mm-hmm. When I, if I was in high school or college or if I was working at a law firm or a doctor's office I mean, or a school teacher, you just want to see basketball. I don't Everyone's well off. Everyone's making good money. They just want to see LeBron, Kobe, and their teams Try to get another championship, you know. And Jared Dudley. So let me ask. You, let me ask you, Jared, back to basketball. Now, how how is it? In, you know, in the Phoenix locker room, you got a, a nice international flavor with flavor with the team. How do you guys all get along? You know, Pietrist, Gortat. You know what's uh, you know what's it like in in the, in the Phoenix, the whole team and the energy you, of the team. You, usually, usually in general, Europeans are usually quiet, more quiet than the Americans. Uh, but Peters is the opposite. Peters probably allows doing the locker room. He's hilarious. He he's someone that has 
no conscience. He'll say whatever's on his mind and do whatever. So he 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 lightens up, you know, the the atmosphere around there. Gore Todd's a hard worker. He wants to win. Um, you know what? We yeah, had Lopez. Gore before. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean Lopez. I mean, I mean, I don't know if he's European. I, mean, I know he had. Oh black. no, but I mean, just a different personality. Yeah. Oh, the question that I mean, that's everywhere. I mean, that's I mean, that, that's a cool thing. I mean, you just know when you, yeah. when you get on, when you get on the bus, you can tell people's personalities just by the bus. If you sit in the front, you want no problems. You just want to be quiet, put the iPod on, maybe talk to your girl. If you're on the back of the bus, that's you usually the black people hang out or the people that want to clown and have a good time. <laughs> you just know, you know, when you're on the plane, who wants to play cards or who wants to read a book, and that's just a great thing about life. It's just getting different personalities and working together to try to come to a common goal. Hey, Jared, man, I, I know last year you had one of your best seasons so far, and I'm looking forward to you double figures and nothing. Double figures or bust this year, baby. You got to put the, put on for your city. Oh, definitely. Definitely, man. I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm, uh, I've been training hard, so I'm ready for a big year. <laughs> 